So first, how many people have used behaviors? Yes, yes. Etsy? Hi. Yes, Polestar. Nice. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. So I'm Jason. I work at Etsy. I work on Marionette. And I was a former hacker schooler. Any other hacker schoolers in the room? Nice. Yes. Yes. Cool. So behaviors are Marionette's approach to interactions in the view. They came about because a lot of people were trying to mix in interactions, like drop downs and tool tips. And we put a lot of thought into it. And, and this is what we have. And we've also seen what Ember and Angular has done as well. So I'm really excited to share what we have. There are a whole array of things that can become a behavior once you start thinking in this mindset. So you have overlays and drop downs, but you also have like form stuff, like validations and error states and syncing with a server perhaps can also be thought that way. We at Etsy have started organizing a lot of our business components around that to at least thinking about it. So the blue stuff are general, and then the pink stuff are things that you might talk about at work that are like jargony things. At Etsy, we have listings. <laughs> we have transactions. We have receipts. They all share common interactions, regardless of whether they show up in a card on the home page or on a table in the admin section. We want to organize this code so it's dry and reusable. So when I think about behaviors, I think about static markup, and it could be very complicated, a layout within a layout within a layout. And then I think about the things that make the app dance, the interactions. So we might have a really simple sign-up form that's going to show up on the page, but that sign-up form could also show up in an overlay. And that inherently changes the way we present it. There's going to be shared markup, and there are going to be shared interactions. Like The overlay will probably be on a mask, which is global. There will probably be that close button on the top. It will probably animate in whatever kind of things you want. And you're going to want to be able to encapsulate that. So how do you do that? What's the best way to do that in Backbone? I mean, we've all done it in jQuery with like, you know, dollar, selector, click. But what's the Backbone aesthetic for that? What do we want to do in Marinette? What patterns do we want to set up in Marinette? So can you see that? We've got a sign up form that I just built pretty quickly with a UI hash. It has a click event on the sign in button. And you can imagine like, we might do a post request and authenticate and all that stuff in here. It's all custom to the sign up form. Not that interesting. We mix in the event stuff for the overlay, and it becomes more interesting. It has a close button. It might also have a mask, an event, some handlers, stuff that you're going to want to reuse in all your other overlays. It doesn't matter that this is uh, the sign up form. It's common. And, and what's the best way to do that? So with behaviors, we can pull that out really easily and just put it in another object. So behaviors are an object you can put interactions in. In this case, we have an overlay with the same UI hash, same event hash, same callback. And that's great, just because it's somewhere else. We can go back to the view, remove that green stuff that we no longer want add an overlay behavior, and we're done. It's just going to work. We have the overlay. It has the click handler. It will open, close, all that stuff. So why are behaviors better than other strategies, like inheritance or mix-ins, or however else you might want to incorporate those interactions? Why is it better than not just like copy and pasting this code everywhere you go? So before we had behaviors, we used inheritance. So we had an overlay view. And with the overlay view, we put the UI hash in and the events hash, and we had the handlers. And it worked all right. When Backbone Extend takes the, a new object and does the inheritance, it's going to do a shallow collision. So we had to write code to extend the UI hash and the events hash and the classes. So that was sub-ideal. The other thing is that as we rolled out our views and began putting them in overlays, we found that some views were more like each other than they were like an overlay. So the sign-in form talks about users. And we had other views that also talked about users. And we wanted to group those with inheritance. And we didn't really care about the overlay thing as much. So inheritance didn't really work there. 
It also broke down when we wanted multiple, multiple behaviors for the same view. So we had overlays, which were cool, but we also wanted to mix in or extend in other stuff. So we got other behaviors, other interactions, and we couldn't do that either. So then we went to mixins. And we had like, you know, this mixin function that wrapped backbone view.extend, and you gave it an object and it pulled in those properties. So we had the sign in form, and then we had an overlay mix in, and it just like come in with the same UI hash, same events hash, same functions. And it went into the instance and it worked. We were able to use $.extend, which wasn't shallow, so events would be pulled in, UI things would be pulled in. Occasionally, we had collisions with events, so like two mix ins could want to have the same event, like click dot close, maybe a confirm, maybe the overlay would close, that kind of thing. That was awkward. Uh, we began thinking about functions that were defined in multiple mixins that would want to like compose each other and then ordering mattered and you didn't want to override and that got weird. And then the more subtle thing that really got me about mixins is that at the end of the day, you don't really have separation. Yes, the code for the overlay is in one file and the code for the sign in form is in the other but the prototype is gonna be the same and the instance is gonna share all that state. So our overlay has state about whether it's shown and has the animation logic and all the other things that it's concerned about and the sign in form has all the things it's concerned about and with the mix in, they were all in the same place. They were all coupled. There was no separation and that makes it hard to debug so when we had weird things going on, we didn't really know what was going on and when it came time to change the dimes, we went through like four filters, for example. I went from drop downs to overlays back to drop downs and then some other pattern. And it was hard to change that because the mixins were clogging the prototype and the instance properties. And that was really frustrating. So, our behavior is better. I'm just going to show this one more time. Significantly <laughs> at the end of the day. So, with behaviors, they're created with the view. The view states up front that it wants an overlay behavior. And when the view is instantiated, the behavior is instantiated. Initialize is called. You can do whatever setup you want. And when the view shuts down with a close or destroy handler, it shuts down too. So it lives side by side. That's the first thing. It's separate and it lives side by side. The second thing that's really nice about behaviors is that they're proxy objects. So they hear everything the view hears. The view gets a DOM click it will hear that. The view gets a trigger, it's gonna hear that. So if a layout wants to trigger something like close overlay, it can trigger it on the view and the behavior is gonna hear it and it's gonna do it. So the view is actually getting those interactions like it knows how to close an overlay even though it didn't define that just by pulling in that behavior. So that's amazing. And then the third thing is multiple behaviors are orthogonal, they're independent. So I can have an overlay behavior and I can have key presses and they're both gonna work side by side and they're not gonna clobber each other. They can communicate with each other through events and that's really clean. So you begin to compose up these really great interactions just by pulling in these behaviors and the view no longer is concerned with all the interactions it otherwise would be so you have much smaller views. Cool, so we like behaviors and you can do cool things with them. The second example is a list of food. And that's cool, whatever. It's easy with behaviors to make it a drop down. And it's also easy with behaviors to give it, so yeah, you click, that's a drop down. Uh, give it key press events. Like imagine this is like spotlight. So when you hit down, the currently highlighted thing is pizza, and then you hit down again, and you get burritos, and up again, and you get pizza, and then you hit enter, and it selects the thing, just like as if you clicked it. So, multiple behaviors, the same view. Once again, we have a really simple view with only list stuff. It has an event for clicking on the option, it has a handler that like selects the thing, no problem. We add in some logic for the dropdown, like the button handler and dropdown show. This is gonna be duplicated code and we know we wanna extract it. So that's what we do. We pull it into the dropdown behavior and it's just gonna work. We pulled out the events and the dropdown show. 
And by the way, this dropdown show, it's composed like on capital dropdown capital show. So if the view receives the event dropdown colon show, it's going to call out to this behavior because trigger method is just going to invoke this method. So it's really powerful. The list view loses that green stuff, which is duplicated, gets the dropdown behavior, and then just works. So you can magically take any list you want, update the markup so it has the button and it has the dropdown stuff, and then incorporate the dropdown behavior, and you're good to go. You can go from a list to a dropdown back to an overlay really, really fast with this pattern. So key presses. So we can do things like pizza to burritos. We add in the hotkey behavior. That gives us a key press hash with up, down, and enter. And then we're fine, just like that. It's duplicated code. Actually, no, it's not. It's all there. We, the behavior is right there. And all this stuff is custom to the list. You can imagine the hotkey behavior does the bind for the key events, and it also does the unbind on close. And when I look at this, this behavior, I'm really happy with the shape of this code. If you look at the first half, it's all configuration. The first thing you see is that this list has two behaviors. So you know immediately to think about drop downs and key presses. The second thing you know to look for are the events. So you know what it's going to interact with. You know it cares about key presses, like up and down. And then the third thing are handlers. And the fourth thing could be like internal implementation stuff. And if I look at on click option and we look at on enter, they're doing something really similar. One takes a click event, the other takes a key press, but they're both selecting an item. So we can extract that code and put that into some internal implementation that's shared really, really easily. And then the other thing is that we've got this really cool unit, this UI component that represents a list and it can go in a drop down and can be put anywhere in the app. So we could use this in many places too. And in V2, you can turn item view right there into behavior. It's just going to work. And you have the list behavior, which includes other behaviors. And you can put that in another view, and it's going to be amazing. All this duplication now consolidated into one place, and you can use it throughout your app. Really, really powerful stuff. So the third example is where this really came to bear for us. We'd built out a bunch of overlays. We'd built out a bunch of other things. And then we got to listing edit. You know, there's a photo, there's a title, price, quantity. You can feature a listing, that kind of thing. But we wanted to do interactions with this unit that we weren't doing anywhere else in the app. We were going to do validation. So dollar, 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 you can't do. We show a tooltip. Can't do that. You fix it, it goes away. Sure. You add some good stuff on a debounce or a blur, we're going to start saving it. When the sync comes back, sync or save, when the save comes back, we're going to show that it worked. And then after 200 milliseconds, that's going to go away too. Really, really fast stuff. This quick edit flow changed the way, or could change the way sellers manage their inventory because they're going through it much, much faster. That's what we care about here. We wanted to make it easier. But it was hard to build. The first implementation was 300 lines of view code. The form state by itself had to live separately from the listing model because we're not going to constantly mutate the listing model until we know it's a good change, until we know the servers validated it. So we didn't need that. We needed to know about all the fields for the form state so we could do the validation smoothly. We were doing these debounce things so you could start changing the title. And while that's saving, change other things. But we don't want to save those until the first one comes back. So we have to handle those race conditions. We want to do validation with tooltips. That's cool. And we want to do this auto-saving thing, which is really cool. And they're all different interactions. They were all living side by side and communicating with each other and the listing. So we put them in different behaviors. And it was amazing because our listing view for the edit form went from 400 lines or 300 lines, it was huge, to like 60. And those 60 lines were mostly configuration and setup where we described what was going on. We also had this like title counter thing for like 140 characters. It was custom to this form, so it didn't belong in a behavior. And it was really easy to reason about too. 
we could look at each behavior and unit test it, describe it, reason about it by itself. It was a really, really good refactor. So that sold us about behaviors. And to wrap up, I think there are a couple things when I think about it that really come home. One, behaviors help you organize events and actions. They're different than layouts and collection views, which is about the structure. They focus on the horizontal problem of how do I show an overlay, how I do validation, how do I do these things that are gonna be temporal and make the, the app rich. They provide separation on that layer in the same way that layouts give you regions. So you can describe the interaction in one thing and then just reason about it there. And then they just communicate over events. They make it easy to unit test because you have that isolation. You don't have to have this big view that you're reasoning about. You have this small thing that lives side by side. And then we have a living style guide here where we have drop downs and pop ups and we have all the things that you have in the app, but isolated. And without behaviors, we couldn't do it. Like we would have to spin up the entire app with an app layout and the style guide would have to have the header and the footer if we couldn't separate out this code. And behaviors let us do that, which was huge for us because as a developer, if you hadn't used an overlay, you want to know how to use it. As a designer, you want to know about the overlay and how it's going to work by itself, fully documented, living side by side of the app, and behaviors let us do that. And then the last thing is that you can build up complex interactions. The way we built up the form was great. The second form was even easier. It was different, but we could reuse those behaviors. The way we're thinking about the next feature that we're adding is great because we already have these existing building blocks that we can compose. So behaviors are simple. They should be simple. All these blue things could be things ideally we all share. We have a cookbook with some of them up there now that you can go to. It's Marinette Recipes in the Puppets repo. Go there, play with it, download it. They're going to get better over time. And we'll have an official UI guide or UI um, repo that we can share our overlays with you guys, and you can share them with us. And those are all accessible. That's the blue stuff. The pink stuff is just as exciting. Because for us, our listings and our receipts are really complicated. I know you guys have really complicated things too, all the jargon that we talk about. Those share interactions in the same way that other views could be shared and things like that. And those will be the behaviors that you're really proud of that you build out as well. So the list, just to bring this point home, had drop downs and hotkeys, and our form had validation tooltips, autosave form state. The listing card and the listing table will share things as well. And that's what I got, behaviors. They're great. You all should use them.